Now let us go to uh, anode, cathode, electrolytic solution present in second, uh, I mean uh, alkaline batteries. This is an alkaline battery of 1.5 volt. Uh, so this is uh, now uh, utilized in the place of dry type. It has a long shelf life. So I will try to explain what is the anode, what is the cathode and what are the electrolytes present in alkaline battery. In an alkaline battery, <coughs> we use zinc, graphite, cathode, electrolyte is potassium hydroxide. See, we replace um, ammonium chloride with potassium hydroxide. Now, let us see the anode reaction and cathode reaction in an alkaline battery. Here also loss of electrons takes place. Zinc reacts with OH minus ions to form zinc hydroxide and two electrons. These electrons are utilized or gained in the cathode reaction. The net reaction in an alkaline battery, this is the net reaction, zinc plus 2 MnO2 plus water giving zinc hydroxide and Mn2O3 of course with voltage. So the advantage as I told you, <coughs> the zinc never gets dissolved because it has no acidic medium, zinc is present along with hydroxide medium. So therefore there is no dissolution of zinc number one, therefore it has long life, long shelf life, <coughs> there will be no voltage drop also. So this, these are the advantages of uh, this batteries alkaline batteries. The disadvantages definitely when you have some advantages there will be some disadvantages. Here the cost is little more compared to dry type cells. The cost of manufacture is going to be little more. This is the disadvantage of alkaline battery. Still it finds applications in numerous equipments. Okay. Now we move on to secondary batteries. The only disadvantage in the primary batteries or primary cells are they cannot be recharged. Once you have to, once you have used it, you have to throw it away. So that is the problem with primary type uh, batteries. That is why we have developed secondary batteries otherwise known as rechargeable batteries. So the important type is lead acid battery. The first one is lead acid battery. This is also called storage cell, storage battery, lead accumulator. See all the secondary batteries are called accumulators and also called storage batteries because they can store energy and you can recharge these batteries. You can recharge these batteries. See what happens when you react, uh, these reactants in the, in the cell, the reactants will be converted into products. Of course with uh, electrical energy. Now, this works as an electrochemical cell. This electrochemical cell can be recharged and it can be converted into an electrolytical cell by passing electricity. So, once you pass the electricity, the reverse reactions takes place. So, these reverse reactions take place. See, because of the reverse reactions, the products formed are converted back to reactants. Of course, with the consumption of electrical energy for which you have to give energy from an external source. So therefore, rechargeable batteries can be always used. So they have long life. Okay, let us start lead acid battery and let me try to explain what are the components, how these chemical reactions are taking place in a lead storage battery. So lead acid batteries are found in all automobiles any automobile will make use of lead acid battery. It is generally a 12 volt battery or 6 volt battery. It is <coughs> used in all automobiles. Of course, uh, nowadays we use in UPS systems. So, all lead acid batteries are utilized in UPS systems. Okay. In lead acid battery, the anode, cathode and electrolytic solutions are
in a lead acid battery the electrolytic solution will be sulfuric acid so to the, the level of 21 percent concentration the density may be 1.2 so alternatively we will arrange anode and cathode in the lead accumulator see the these three one two three are anodes which are simply lead plates two and this four and six these are cathodes actually they are they are lead grids uh, fixed with lead dioxide so they have lead grids again for contact we have lead and mixed with lead oxide so these two electrodes anode and cathode are separated by some insulators in between this anode and cathode we have some insulators so therefore <coughs> in a lead acid battery we may have different sets of electrochemical cells for example when you have one anode and one cathode it is a simple electrochemical cell here we have arranged three electrochemical cells therefore this is called the battery so generally a battery is a combination of different electrochemical cells you can use three sets or four sets depending upon your requirement for example here i have used only three sets so out of this i may get about 5 4.5 volt or something like that now let us learn what is happening how this lead acid battery is used what chemical reactions are going inside a lead storage battery in a lead storage battery you have an anode and of course you have a cathode so let us discuss the chemical reactions that are taking place in a lead storage battery in anode lead gives lead 2 plus and 2 electrons and these lead 2 plus ions react with the sulfate ions in the hydro uh, sulfuric acid medium so the sulfate ions again react with lead 2 plus to form lead sulfate which is a precipitate lead sulfate is a precipitate formed in the anode in the cathode pbo2 reacts with hydrogen ions supplied by the sulfuric acid and utilizes two electrons to form lead 2 plus and water this lead 2 plus again combined with sulfate to form lead sulfate solid again you see lead sulfate solid at cathode so during the production of electrical energy this lead sulfate will be produced lead sulfate is a solid this is the point number 1 and this being a solid it gets deposited on both anode and cathode the sulfuric acid which is an electrolyte used here is being consumed in the reaction therefore the concentration of sulfuric acid will also get decreased during this reaction therefore to overcome these problems and to make it this battery a rechargeable one we have to supply electrical energy from an outside source normally a cell with <coughs> 2 volt so when this 2 volt electric energy is supplied all these reactions are reversed so for example at the anode lead 2 plus will combine with 2 h2o to form lead oxide and 4 h plus and 2 electrons all these reactions will get reversed let me write those reactions during discharge mode the lead storage battery works as an electrochemical cell during recharge mode this electrochemical cell becomes electrolytical cell so therefore it utilizes electrical energy to carry out this chemical reactions the anode in lead storage battery during discharge mode now becomes a cathode in recharge mode so i will explain the re reverse reactions okay let us go to anode cathode first so lead sulfate <coughs> solid gives lead 2 plus and 
sulfate. This lead two place take two electrons to give lead solid. Therefore, at cathode lead sulfate is being consumed. Lead sulfate forms lead two plus. This lead two plus is converted into lead solid. And at anode, So these are the recharging reactions taking place in a lead storage battery. During recharge mode, cathode in cathode reaction, lead sulphate is utilized. So any precipitate formed during the discharge mode now gets dissolved. Same is the case at the anode, lead sulphate becoming lead 2 plus and sulphate. And another important point to be noted here is sulfuric acid is reproduced. So therefore, the concentration of sulfuric acid which is expected to uh, reduce during discharge mode now gets increased because of the recharging. So therefore, the two important points, one sulfuric acid concentration increased and lead sulphate gets dissolved. So these are the reactions that take place during uh, recharge mode of a lead storage battery. Now let us discuss the advantages disadvantages and uses. So lead storage battery is a common sight everywhere in a car, automobiles, hospitals, telephone exchanges, power stations, in gas ignition processes. In all these cases we use lead storage battery. The advantage of course it is rechargeable, it is again safe to use, it is not uh, so dangerous, it is less cost and coming to the disadvantage, the lead sulphate solid which gets deposited in the lead grids may spoil the life of the battery. So that is the one disadvantage, it is the slight disadvantage and the rarest chance is that this during uh, electrolysis of water. So when we use this battery there may electrolysis, they, uh, there may be a chance of electrolysis to occur and this electrolysis may bring a mild explosion. So this is the problem with the uh, lead storage battery. So in our uh, next topic we will discuss nickel cadmium battery which is another rechargeable battery.